Yes, hello. Welcome everyone to our Cecilia Health webinar this evening. Um, the title is Embracing the Holidays Without Deprivation, Healthy Eating Strategies for Every Festive Eater. Um, should you have any technical difficulties during the broadcast, there is a number at the bottom of the screen to call Citrix support. Um, the number is, let's see, 1-800-263-6317. And um, our format includes a short presentation followed by an interactive discussion. You will have a chance to ask questions at the end of the presentation. To type in a question, use the question section of the webinar toolbar. You'll see a picture there to the right um, of the screen. And we look forward to an interactive webinar this evening. A disclaimer, we know that the information you're about to hear may motivate you to make lifestyle changes. Please consult your physician before making any changes to your current routine. As a Cecilia Health Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist, um, Laura will be providing strategies to help you manage your diabetes. This online Q&A session is intended to give general advice, and the information is not a substitute for personal medical advice and involves the professional opinion of the Cecilia Health Certified Diabetes Care and Education Specialist. Our community forum leader this evening is Ms. Laura Johnson. Laura um, has, been has been a practicing registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator for 11 years. She's from Irvine, Kentucky, but now lives in Houston, Texas. Laura has a passion for nutrition and enjoys cooking for her family. Some of her other hobbies are watching Kentucky basketball, traveling with her family and spending time with her Norfolk Terrier named Butter. So thank you, Laura, for being with us this evening. And now you may take it away. Thank you so much and welcome everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you guys today. This is my favorite topic to talk with patients about as it's one of my favorite times of, of the year. And as you see there in the picture, that's my dog Butter there. We're enjoying the festivities already in that picture. <laughs> So first, what we're going to do is kind of go over the agenda and, and the things that we're going to cover tonight. Um, you might want to have a pen and paper in hand to write down some ideas, too, that, you know, they might help you and it might help you with the goals that you have set for yourself over the holiday season, too. So I'm going to tell you some things for sure that you might want to jot down. So we're going to talk about some realities on some common holiday meals, things that we can do to help prepare, uh, modifying and preparing healthy meals the power of portion control, and it is very powerful, tips for healthy holiday eating, and some question and answers and sharing as well. So what I typically will do is wait for the questions at the end because I might answer your question as I proceed through the uh, webinar tonight, but I will take a look at the end and answer your questions. Um, I might do a little bit of explanation of some things as to, uh, too from the PowerPoint because some people are listening on the phone. So if they can't see it, I will explain to the holiday season. You know, there are so many environments that can pose challenges over the course of the holiday season. We have on the road and airport traveling, you know, parties with family and work, potluck and catered meals. We've got tasty beverages, you know, that are seasonal and in abundance and some tasty treats and candy dishes on desks given as gifts. You know, it's a lot, lots of moments that we want to think about and prepare for. How often do you hear some of these statements during the holidays? These are some statements that I often hear, and I might even say myself, and you might have even heard yourself say these. This is the only time of year that I get to eat this food. It reminds me of home. This tastes just like mom's. This tastes just like mamaw's. I don't want to offend anyone by turning their food down. I will start eating better after the holidays. I will just have one. That's not a lot, right? You know, with all of these challenging scenarios and potential excuses and phrases that might be on the tip of your tongue, we're going to dig into some of the solutions that will help you to stay on track with your health and your blood sugar management and really help you to avoid these statements. And if you said them to help you to fix them so that you're making really healthy choices for your blood sugar management and your health. So first, let's talk about some realities on holiday snacks. 
this is a slide that can be a little bit confusing, but as I explain it, it will put it into a really good perspective for you. Those knickknacks and you know that are here and there, they can really add up on the calories, the carbohydrates, and could pack on some extra pounds. You know, we have a couple examples here. We'll see first a peppermint, you know, one. One is 20 calories. If you have 10 a day, that would be 200 calories. Having 200 extra calories a day in a year could yield about a five pound weight gain. Now let's switch to chocolate, which we're on the heels of Halloween. So you might have some chocolate laying around. One Snickers, mini Snickers is 100 calories. 10 of them is 1,000 calories. 1,000 extra calories a day could yield up to 25 pounds a year. You know, you might say, I don't have peppermints every day or chocolate bars every day. And you're probably right. But as I could compare to close people like my family or some patients that I have, if you're the type that you're saying, I don't have that every day, but every day you have something else that might be a little more calorically dense or carbohydrate dense, then they really will add up. And those calories can creep in through our drinks, the extra portions that we dip and those candy dishes. I don't know about you guys, but when I visit my mom in the holidays, she's got goodies in every nook and cranny of that house. And so we have to really be careful. So, you know, let's talk about how much activity it would take to burn off those extra munchy calories. You know, for 200 calories of peppermint or whatever it might be that you'd have, it would take an hour of activity, perhaps, you know, an, a half hour of walk and a half hour yard work, but it would take you an hour to burn it off. For the extra 1,000 calories from those Snickers, it would take three hours of activity to burn that off. And so perhaps it might be in an hour of the elliptical, an hour of weights, and an hour of yard work, but it's going to take a lot of activity to burn that off. I have a little cartoon here for those of you who can't see. It says, two little snowmen. It says, looks like you put on a little weight over the holidays. And he says, yeah, but it's mostly water. And that's what some people might tell themselves and we might all tell ourselves just to kind of make it feel better. But, you know, over the course of the holidays, those little bits here and there, they, were, they can really add up. So some realities on those common holiday meals too. You, this is going to be a shocker statistic for most of us here. An average holiday meal provides 4,500 calories, 229 grams of fat, and 389 grams of carbohydrates. No wonder those after meal naps happen when we get so sleepy. So where are these high figure numbers coming from? So we have several listed here. And for those listening on the phone, we'll, we'll touch on each of them quickly. First, pecan pie, 500 calories, 70 grams of carbs. One cup of stuffing, or as we say in Kentucky, dressing. Um, 350 calories, 35 grams of carbs. Either way, stuffing or dressing, it's going to stuff stuff you for sure. Six ounces of dark turkey meat, 320 calories, no carbs, it's protein. 12 grams of fat because it's primarily from the dark meat there. Mashed potatoes, one cup, 320 calories, 30 grams of carbs. The fat depends on kind of the amounts of additives, you know, butter, whipping cream, cream, what you put in there. Gravy, 206 calories for a quarter cup and 15 grams of carbs for that serving. And lastly, green bean casserole, 350 calories for one cup, 20 grams of carbs. So those are just kind of the, the highlights of very common Thanksgiving meals. So let's start with some things that we can do to work on it to help you stay on track. Tips for healthy eating on the holidays. Don't skip your meals prior to your holiday gathering. Have a breakfast or snack before you leave. For those of you who take medications that are active for long periods of time, skipping meals really could cause you to become hypoglycemic too. So you gotta be careful for that. Going to an event super hungry, you'll be more likely to overindulge as well. Think more about the people you're with than the food that's present. We all know, especially this year, how thankful we are for our family and friends we have in our life. Socialize, play games, take a walk outside, make 2020, you know, a family memory book maybe. You know, whatever you do, try not to be right next to the food to help avoid that grazing that might you might be tempted to do if it's right there in front of you. Consider having some low carbohydrate or low calorie starters. Some low carbohydrate appetizers you might want to jot down 
Here's one of those things I was going to tell you to have a list for. These are some really good low carb apps. Veggie tray with light dip. Of course, dietitian always got to give you some veggies there. Meatballs with a sauce that's made with like a combination of a sugar-free jam and a low carbohydrate barbecue sauce. These are really yummy. Little salmon bites. So like um, it's like a well, it's the salmon that's not raw, but it's smoked salmon. There we go. I'm sorry. Smoked salmon that you put on top of a, like a slice of cucumber with a little bit of light cream cheese and some fresh dill. That's a really yummy snack. Put a toothpick through that. Buffalo chicken dip. This is a, a dip that's made with like chicken and some light cream cheese and light ranch dressing um, and some Frank's red hot sauce. And you can dip um, celery in that, or you can have some tortilla chips as well, but that's a low carb option there. Veggie based soups are really good. Remember warm soups are very satisfying and filling. So that's a good option. Cheese ball with veggies. Um, cheese balls are common in Kentucky. I think they're, they're pretty known across the country, um, but also char charcuterie boards. Those are really good with the meat and cheeses and um, like olives th those are and nuts those are great too use a smaller plate to help control your portion sizes instead of a dinner plate use a salad plate or if you're using paper plates that you know those common ones you get right now at the holidays you know they all come in different sizes stay away from those that are really big um, like the chinette ones they make some really large ones they're pro they're bigger than a football honestly but um, imagine if you fill that plate up what your belly has to hold if you were to eat all that. Your, your body's gonna have to work hard to digest that for sure. Serve meals in the kitchen instead of the table. That's an option. I know with big crowds, that's what they often do, but if it's a smaller family, you might have it right in front of you. But if you do it in the kitchen instead, you don't have that food right there in front of you, tempting you and taunting you. Um, plan before you eat, Lim limit the number of starchy foods on your plate. You know, check out all the options you've got and make a quick mental plan. You might want a sampling of a few things, you know, focusing maybe on a couple things, but spend your calories and carbohydrates wisely and make sure it's foods that you enjoy. If there's something you eat year round, you know, maybe pass on those. They're not really special for Thanksgiving or Christmas, but, you know, maybe it's you already have mashed potatoes on a regular basis, but, you know, you don't have dressing very often. You don't have cranberry sauce very often. So, or you might want the dessert. If there's, you know, make your balanced choice of what you might like. So tips for um, specific things too. So be cautious of cranberry sauce. They can be really yummy, um, but they can also be a lower calorie and lower um, um, fat over gravies. These can add some calories, but I'm gonna tell you a good cranberry res uh, sauce recipe here in a moment. Actually, I'll give it to you right now while we're at it. If you combine three cups of fresh cranberries, two tangerines, you know, seeds out, and about a quarter to a third cup of sugar substitute. You'll put first the cranberries in a food processor, process that, take them out, and then combine the cranberries and the tangerines with your sugar substitute, and then refrigerate. And you can do that overnight, so it's something you don't even have to do the day of cooking. And this will yield, instead of, you know, common cranberry sauces can have about 45 grams in a quarter cup. It depends on what how it's made. But this one for a quarter cup has 37 calories and six grams of carbohydrates. And you, like I said, you can make this up to two days before the party. Don't be afraid to be assertive. If you're not hungry, say, no, you know, no thanks. So, I, you know, I can vouch that this can be tough when you've got that sweet mammal or aunt that insists. But you can just sweetly say, you know, I'm just so full right now. You know, I really wouldn't even enjoy it. I'm just, I'll, I'll maybe take some for later. And they might be just happy with that. You know, leave the table or the room when, you, when you're full. It can be tough to resist those tasty pinches and spoonfuls here and there. You know, instead, maybe offer to help clear the table, maybe wash some dishes, take a walk or you know, maybe go play a game. Check your blood sugar throughout the day. This can kind of help keep your mindset clear and help guide your choices as well. Remember, leftover meals do count. Either make or take the amount of food that you, you think that might be consumed. That can help limit the leftovers, first of all. Um, 
and then also maybe have some containers available if you're hosting there or bring some with you if if maybe your family says we're going to have some and that way that you can kind of divvy them out amongst everybody there they can take them home fill them up and then there's no waste as well you might even want to look into places in your area that might take donations too it depends on how much you've got left over but some places um, I know have people that would be really grateful to eat some leftovers, but definitely don't don't waste them for sure. So here's some recipe modifications, some things that we can do differently. Don't be intimidated to make some changes to recipes to help lower the calories and carbs. Like I mentioned with the sugar substitute in that cranberry sauce earlier, this also goes for desserts and you know drinks as well. You can swap low calorie uh, for high calorie products and Make, it makes a big difference on what you save in your calories and carbs. So let's start here with some, some different swaps that we can have. Low fat cheese, a good one right there. Greek yogurt instead of sour cream, or if you're using sour cream, maybe go for the light version. I will warn you, some of the <clears throat> fat-free options out there for mayos and sour creams and, and different items, sometimes those will end up having more carbohydrates because they're compensating for the lack of fat in there. So I'll just warn you right there, not all fat-free things are recommended there. Some recipes you could swap mustard for mayo. Some, you know, it is completely a different flavor, but there are some that you can do that with. Lots of desserts, you could swap applesauce for oil. Um, lighter butter like Smart Balance instead of butter for those rolls that can help with saving some calories and fat too. Some people even put um, like the lighter butters in their mashed potatoes. One that's not listed on here too, um, mashed potatoes, if that's a common you know favorite for you for Thanksgiving, some people do like a mixture of half car um, cauliflower, half potatoes, so that will cut back on the carbohydrates. Now there is some art an, an art to like making really good mashed cauliflower but when done well it's really delicious so that's a good one too and also cinnamon or splenda instead of sugar like i mentioned earlier just be careful of the fat-free options but with these switches noted here are some some switch some savings Fat-free or light sour cream for dips, spreads, or potatoes. One cup of regular sour cream has 35 grams of fat and 320 calories. So a big savings right there. 2% or reduced fat cheese and cheese balls or appetizers. Eight ounces of regular has 320 calories and 36 grams of fat. So big savings there too. Greek yogurt can be used in place of sour cream in a lot of dips and appetizers. So recipes you can swap um, also are for mayo. It can actually go in place of that too. And one cup of mayo has a thousand calories and 132 grams of fat. So this could help a lot. Remember that when you dip your plate, your portion is the the biggest key to this. Oh, we've got here vegetables too, I apologize. Replace some of the bread in your holiday stuffing with water chestnuts. You know, these are crunchy. They kind of will get a little bit tender as they're cooking as well. Another thing, there are some lighter carbohydrate breads that are on the market that you can get. Um, if they're no carb or very like less than four grams of carbs per slice, some of them will become a little bit gummy as they're cooking. So if you're making it in a stuffing, it might not be a pleasant texture, but um, some other ones that are just a, a lighter option will could replace some of the cornbread or the baguettes and things that you might put in there. And you might maybe put half and half. So adding some like celery, um, onion, water chestnuts, that can be some veggies you, you incorporate there. Cocoa, when, when holiday baking recipes do have cocoa in it, you can substitute that too. So three tablespoons of cocoa for every one ounce of chocolate can be done too. Evaporated milk, last one here, you can substitute canned evaporated milk in, for cream in a lot of recipes. So heavy cream is called for in a lot of things or heavy whipping cream. It's a significant uh, you know, amount more of fat and calories that you could save just by making that switch too. Portion size matters. Remember that when you dip your plate, your portion control is one of the biggest keys to your success. You know, you want to make your plate colorful. If you if you see a plate that's full of white colors, it's likely lacking veggies and will probably be higher in the carb choices more than likely. So 
make sure to dip some of those green beans or roasted Brussels sprouts or asparagus that might be there. Um, that low sugar cranberry sauce is really pretty and a yummy addition as well. You know, think of that my plate method when fixing your plate. You might have talked about this with your, your registered dietitian or your certified diabetes educator on your phone calls, but fill half of your plate with veggies. Avoid you know, casseroles that have heavier cream sauces and buttery bread crust. At my family, that would be something like cabbage casserole, broccoli casserole, um, um, heavier cream sauces. A, a really a green bean casserole, I would say, is probably a heavier one in my family's. It depends. You can make them in a healthier version as well. Those are the ones you got to be real careful for. Fill a quarter of your plate with starches. That's the ones that we've said already. Maybe take a a, a look at all of your options you've got there and what might be some of the highlight things that are kind of special to you. It might be sweet potato casserole, it might be the stuffing, it might be your aunt's homemade rolls, but then you might wanna take a couple things, maybe a couple small portions so it only fits a quarter of your plate there um, and avoid the things that you have on a regular basis that aren't particularly special. And then the other quarter of your plate will be your protein. That might be your turkey there, or some people have ham, some people have prime rib. There's different things, for, but turkey's most common. And then of course we got our little serving of our cranberry sauce there. Okay, we're going to talk about some drinks here in a moment as well. So first thing, you know, don't don't beat yourself up if you overindulge. Just get back on track the next meal. You know, remember to exercise, move that body. You don't have to work off every extra calorie you've eaten, but a walk early in the day and after the meal can really help keep you on track and keep you feeling good and your blood sugars better managed. You know, plan and prepare. Like I mentioned earlier, take a look at what's offered when you eat, you know, contribute items that you know will help provide healthy options that, and so you don't, and you're not famished as well. You know, if you're the one hosting, you've got a lot of control over the options that you have there. Um, but if you're not the one that's hosting, then, you know, maybe ask, what do you have planned? And if they've got pretty much all the carbs that you could ever desire, then you say, okay, I, I might bring a charcuterie, a, you know, meat and cheese board and olive just for the appetizer or something. Um, you might want to bring the asparagus as a side dish. I'll tell you a yummy asparagus side dish the holidays is asparagus that you wrap with prosciutto. So it's a really thin slice of ham. Just wrap your asparagus with a little bit of salt and pepper and olive oil and roast that in the oven. It's really delicious. I'm thinking of these yummy ideas as we go. It's coming up upon us and I know that you and your family would really like those too. You know, you can absolutely enjoy the holidays even if you have diabetes. Can you have a gingerbread cookie and fudge and peanut butter ball in one sitting? You know, certainly not. But making and taking a couple treats home and, you know, spread them out for your enjoyment, maybe over the course of a few days with, with balanced meals, you know, you can have anything. I always tell my patients, there's no food you can't have. It's all, always, always about being mindful and just having a really good balance. Even just this week with Halloween, I've got lots of patients that have leftover candy. So as we've talked about carbohydrates and carbohydrate counting, you know, I've got some that would like to have a little tasty treat, maybe a few nights a week this week. And I just told them, you know what, if you're a lady and, and you're having 30 to 45 grams of carbohydrates at your meal times and dinner, you know that at dinner, you're going to have maybe a mini Snickers afterwards. It's going to be maybe around seven grams of carbs or so, then just a lot for it, however many carbohydrates it's going to be. And maybe take that from what you might have eaten at your dinner, because you can still have that treat. It's totally fine. Okay. So one thing here, I want to go back to the, to the drinks for just one moment. Apple cider. That's one that I have patients often not really consider as one of concern. It's all, it, oftentimes we'll have about 120 calories and 30 grams of carbs. So that's the average. I just want to tell you that one, even though it's a fruit based drink, still pretty high in calories and carbohydrates. 
Um, one cup of regular eggnog has 343 calories and 35 grams of carbs. Um, there are some lighter varieties though I've seen this year, particularly of eggnog that have about 100 to 200 calories and about 15 to 30 grams per cup so of carbs. So that one, you can find some better versions. If you do choose to drink alcohol, just you know, limit the amount you have with food. Um, you might want to talk to your diabetes educator and, and your healthcare team about whether or not it's safe for you and about how much. But the general recommendation is about one per day for women and two for men. And let's remember what is considered a drink. It's, it's 12 ounces of beer, five ounces of wine, and one and a half ounces of distilled spirits. So alcohol can have varying effects on blood sugar management, but um, just keep all of those things in mind. Some people also like to follow a one-to-one -one rule when they're having alcohol. Maybe they'll have their, their alcoholic beverage and then also drink a glass of water as well. Um, but I did want to make mention of that because those are eggnog, apple cider, hot chocolate, um, wine with meals. Just remember, those things have carbs too. So you're already trying to keep and check your carbs for your meal and the drinks are going to be really adding to that. So maybe you might want to save those for another day or another occasion too. All right, so here we have our healthy holiday contract. I know that it is possible to enjoy the wonderful food of this holiday season and keep my blood sugar stable. Today, I make a promise to myself to make healthy food choices during the holiday season. I will balance my food intake. I will limit the sweets and desserts I eat. I will avoid grazing between meals. If I drink, I will do so in moderation. I will maintain my activity level and I will check my blood sugar throughout the day to make sure I am within my target ranges. I promise to enjoy the special time of year and give thanks for my health, happiness, and the love of family and friends. And this is from the American Association of Diabetes Educators. And it really is just a good reinforcement of the goals that you see for yourself over the holidays and what you want to see as a maintain good health measures as you're you're faced with different obstacles, but planning ahead and kind of preparing yourself, you can succeed and stay on track. And remember, don't be hard on yourself. You might overindulge some at your Thanksgiving, the, the meal that you have with your family, but the next meal is not that celebratory meal. It is the next meal that you, you can get right back on track on. So one meal is not going to make your diabetes be in a poor management state whatsoever. Okay, so lots of fun things with the holidays um, coming up. I know okay, we, we're open now to questions, so just go ahead and send them my way. I will take a look here as we kind of talk through things. I know this has been quite a different year. I know some people here are in the patients I've spoken with today in the last few weeks, they're, they don't really know what their plans are just because of how things have been going this year. And speaking of which, this is a, a good question that just came in. I'm concerned with COVID and my family getting together. This has been a concern for many of the patients that I have. Yes. Um, and I actually looked the, this up recently because I led the COVID webinar um, we had earlier this year. If you want to watch any of these webinars from earlier this year, you can log on and watch. They're all recorded. So they're there for you um, if you want to um, go back to that and listen. But um, I looked up the CDC's guidelines because I want to speak to it informed as well and not not from an opinion status either. Um, you know, you you should definitely consider the risk of the virus spread based on you know your location, the statistics of the cases in your area, and also make note that you know you do have a condition. It doesn't increase your risk of getting COVID. Having diabetes does not increase that, but it does increase your risk of complications if you contract it. And that's a, a that was a pretty consistent message when we had our COVID webinar with diabetes as well. This goes for you know other comorbidities too. If you have congestive heart failure, um, heart condition, you know a plethora of different. Uh, health conditions, if you were to contract it, it might be more difficult for you to overcome the complications of it. A few things I made note of from their website that I've been telling my patients uh, that these are their recommendations. 
Indoor gatherings pose more risk than outdoor due to poor ventilation. That's one. Um, gatherings that last longer pose more risk. The number of people increases the risk. Of course, we, we know that. There's no number though that they identified to limit to, but they say the size should be determined based on how well you can limit contact between people, what rules and regulations from your local government lay out in your condition. So um, some areas I know they're not even allowing it from what I'm seeing on the news, but like I said, I, I've not looked up the different states there actual limitations either. So I can't speak to that confidently if your state is going to be a part of that. Hand washing is essential. Social distancing is recommended, staying more than six feet apart. Um, absolutely, if if positive, if someone in your family member has it, you should not attend. It's it's recommended you, you do not get around it. If you know someone's positive, of course. I am gonna just tell a quick thing here. I had a patient, or I'm sorry, a friend that had a baby like a birthday party a few weeks ago and I saw this big gathering. I was like, oh my goodness, I can't it's the first thing I've really seen was people gathering like that. But she said what they did, um, they had the long COVID test, the one that takes three to three days in their area. So they all anybody that wanted to go to the party had to take the test. And when they went to take their test, they had to drive immediately home and quarantine for the three days leading up to the party. No interactions with anyone or going anywhere. And then on the day of the party, if they found that they were negative, they could come. So everybody there from the test reports at the doctor's office, they were negative and could enjoy each other. They still practiced the safe guidelines with hand washing and kept social distance, but they felt more comfortable knowing that everyone did come negative with their COVID test. So that is um, one one way to do it, I suppose. That's not on that's not on the CDC's website, but it was a situation I felt really co comfortable hearing that and seeing how they did it. Um, Okay. How many carbs should I allow myself for the day? As your dietitian, okay, I've got really, I, I love seeing these. These are really good here. Most women, the, the recommended amount, um, and you might have different recommendations based on your your own plan, but for ladies, it's 30 to 45 grams of carbohydrates per meal. So 30 to 45 at each meal. And then for snacks, it's 15 grams in between. For men, it's 45 to 60 grams of carbohydrates at each meal, and then 15 grams in between. Okay, so you may want to Say, say you're having Thanksgiving at like noon or one. This is just hypothetical, but maybe like I told you, don't go into that to that time hungry. Maybe have the lighter end of carbohydrates, maybe 30 grams for a lady. There's a lady that asked this question. Um, 30 grams and then have your 15 gram snack. And then you'll go into your Thanksgiving not hungry, but also not having had the, the most carbohydrates that you would typically be allotted to have just because you're saving a, a bit, but we still want to have that consistent carb control as best we can through your day. Okay, a good question. I'm going to read this as it says because it was really good. It seems like in addition to this nice outline, we need to be taking a deep breath, slow down while we plan and prepare. This is really good. The pressure, anxiety of the holidays, or the excitement of it can be hard on too much food intake. I find it easy to overeat mindlessly. So mindfulness and deep breathing might help too. You are so right. Thank you for saying that. I'm actually going to bring up, this is a really good testament to this question right here. Um, think of, this is called the five S's. So if you want to write this down, it's the five S's of mindful eating. Okay, so here we go. These are all S's. First of all, sit down. This is the first step in he healthy, mindful eating and mindfulness. You know, have a seat. Avoid nibbling in front of the refrigerator or snacking in your car. You know, put food on your plate. You will enjoy food more and eat less when you give eating your full attention. So model just kind of only eat off 
off your feet. So sit down when you're mingling about and you have a like a little saucer in your hand there with lots of foods. It's so easy to eat that and then go back and get more and have conversation. So maybe just save yourself for when you're sitting down eating. When you're eating, the next S is slowly chew. Eat with your non-dominant hand. If you're right-handed, eat with your left. It does show that it can reduce the speed at which you eat about 30%. So, and how, how much you, I'm sorry, it reduces how much you eat by 30%. So a good motto, pace, don't race. You're not in a rush. You're there to enjoy the day with your family and friends and relax. Again, take a breather. It's not a race, just pace yourself. Savor it, that's your third S. Take a mindful bite, smell it, taste it. You know, look at it and, and enjoy for it, everything that it is. And it might even, you might even be thinking of wonderful memories. I know when I take a bite of dressing, I, it can almost make me get teary right now just thinking about it, but I think of my mama. And I remember mixing that dressing with her and watching her crumble up biscuits in her dressing and ladling over her, her stock or her gravy. And I mean, I, it brings back wonderful memories. So I would savor every flavor to have every moment with that. So when you eat, just eat. Okay. Simplify. That's the fourth S. Put healthy foods in convenient places like on the counter. Um, treats out of view. So maybe you're going to like displace yourself outside, maybe visiting on the porch with your family, having playing games. Um, just remember the motto insight in mind, out of sight, out of mind. So that might be something to, to remove yourself from the, the eating area to really enjoy all the other things about Thanksgiving that we have that we're thankful for. Last one, I, I've gotten some smirks at this one before, but it's true. Smile. That's our, our fifth one. Smile. You know, smiling can create that kind of pause between bites too. If you're having conversation and you pause to smile and breathe, you know, it's helping you to feel not just full, but just you're also feeling satisfied, okay? So take a breath. That will also help you manage that stress. And thank you for that question in slash comment that you sent, because it is so true. Breathe, just breathe. We've got a lot of things to work through with our minds this year. It's been a year, I've done this webinar the last few years and it's just different this year. I don't even know if everyone will get to spend time with their family, but I know I've had one today said that for the first time she's gonna make her turkey. She's never made a turkey before, but what a new experience as well. She's taking it with stride and I've give, gave her some good turkey tips. So hopefully it'll come out really delicious um, and I know that they're going to have a, a, a great year no matter what. She's really looking forward to it too. And we have one last question here. I see um, asked me, can I speak to a couple of those healthier eggnogs? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's a couple here. I actually wrote them down in case someone mentioned it. Um, the Califia Farms Holiday Nog. It's almond milk. It has 50 calories and nine grams of carbs in four ounces. And silk soy has 80 calories and 13 grams of carbs too. So those are a couple that are good. I've even seen some low fat ones too that are yummy out there. And they're like the Borden brands and um, mainstream brands. But what they may be a little bit lighter in fat and calories, but the carbs have been almost the same. So you're not going to save carbs, but you might save calories and fat. All right. I'll give it one more second here. Oh, you want me to tell you the... The cranberry sauce one more time you've got it I think I went to that went through that kind of quickly so let me go back to that one here we go I had it written down all right three cups of fresh cranberries two tangerines and a quarter to a third cup of sugar substitute and here's the recipe again remove the seeds from your tangerine process that process that in food processor Put them in a bowl and then process about half of the, the cranberries there. And then you're going to fold together your tangerines that you processed and your cranberries as well as those remaining whole cranberries. And I would kind of shy on the sweetener until you know it's sweet to your taste because sometimes even maybe two tablespoons might be enough, honestly. Um, and also 
a sugar substitute that I know a lot of patients and friends and coworkers as well have said they really like our stevia. Um, it, it's a good one that you can use for baking and um, also swerve. That's one that the, you don't really, you don't have the aftertaste of it. So it's a really pleasant thing that you could um, put, you can even put it in sweet tea, you know, you can put it in your sweet potato casserole. That, uh, that's a good one. The sweet potato casserole, you know, often has brown sugar in it and swerve makes a brown sugar substitute. So that's another good one that you could do differently. Um, another question, while watching our carb intake, what should the fat and calorie intake be? Everyone's is gonna be a bit different based on your, your size. So whenever you have your next call with your coach, I would ask them if they can give you a better guide. Um, like I'd mentioned earlier that the, the meal that could be potential potentially consumed is 4,500 calories, but we don't want that for sure. Um, most often, a general amount of calorie, cons you know, guidelines, it's, like I said, depends on male, female, where you're at with your current weight status, but anywhere from 1600 to 2400, depending on those factors. Um, but ask your, I'm not going to say your name, but ask your educator that you work with with Cecilia Health. Um, if they can help work up your needs, because I do that with patients all the time with mine, they'll give me their height and weight, um, their age, I put in their activity level, and then I can tell them what their basic energy expenditure, like exactly how many calories their body needs to not lose or gain weight just to thrive. And then I tell them what they might need to do to lose a little bit of weight and granted on the day of th of Thanksgiving or Christmas on the days of the Halloweens it's ex anticipated you might have a little more than usual hence why we might say maybe take a, a little bit more activity during the day if you if possible maybe a walk in the morning walk after you've eaten um but your 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 person you work with can definitely give you a more specific one. I'm sorry, I can't give that to you more specifically here, but that is a good question and they can help help guide you. If another thing here, once they tell you the person you work with, your calorie and fat needs for the day, a couple resources that you can use to even enter in what you're eating and kind of help gauge if you're on track with your calories and carbs is you can use my fitness pal that's a great website and an app um, the, the app has a free version and one that you can pay for the free one will give you what you need you can enter in your food and the portion that you have and it will calculate all your calories and carbs protein fat all the things that you'd want to know how much you're having so my fitness pal is a great one m y f i t n e s s p a l my fitness pal Another one is Calorie King. They have a website and an app as well that you can log things and it will tell you the thing, your information too. Um, they, they, they often will work up your actual nutrition needs too, but they're not as specific as your coach would be with you. But Calorie King, C-A-L-O-R-I-E-K-I-N-G.com. And they have the app as well. And they have the one that's to buy or a free one too. Either, either one is going to give you what you need. That's really good. A really good question. There's so many tempting things at the holidays. Um, I, I really hope y'all get to have some wonderful time with your families and safely too. And you might have a socially distanced party, but yet being together, there's so many things to be thankful for this year for sure. And our health is one. And um, you can still meet your goals and do very well with your diabetes management as you go through through the holidays. And you know, even though this is our festive time of holiday, Thanksgiving and Christmas time of year, you know, we always have holidays through the year. We got, you know, Fourth uh, of July, Memorial Day, birthdays, baby showers, wedding showers, Valentine's Day. So you've always got times that this webinar could be helpful for you in different types of settings as well. So I pulled up here, this is the schedule for the next call. Um, it's The next one is called Take Control, Inspiring Tools and Tips for Becoming Your Own Diabetes Coach. That'll be on December the 8th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And then in the new year, 2021, we'll be here before we know it. 
it's going to be called the new year for the new you diabetes resolutions that stick and that will be towards the end of january on the 26th at 6 p.m eastern time too all right well i've enjoyed you guys so much today um if you have any questions oh oh thank you so much um if you have any questions, reach out to your coach that you work with with Cecilia Health. We are so thankful that you guys were here today and we hope you've gained some good insight and on things that you can do to help yourself get through the holidays and be successful. And I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. It's a very special time of year. I'm thankful for you guys. Take care. <laughs>